Welcome back to the sports of them guys. Yeah, I know it's been about a month that I was on a break due to factors beyond my own control, but I digress. But guess what? The Premier League is back to me. Yes, I'm sure everybody is as excited as I am. We'll see two matches tomorrow. Aston Villa taking on Sheffield United and Arsenal taking on Manchester City. So, time to get into it. So, let's go. Today we'll be talking about three things. Um, football being back, uh, Manchester United, the game, a little bit about that game, and also the transfer rumors that have been swirling around. So, the Bundesliga has been back for a few weeks now, with Bayern just like a win away from their eighth title in a row. Let that sink in. Absolutely ridiculous. Yes, Serie A or, or Italian football has been back as well. They started with the Coppa Italia with Juventus and Napoli making the finals. So there are a number of subplots there, none more so than Aria De Laurentiis calling Maurizio Sarri a sellout for money by leaving Napoli to join Chelsea. So who will come out on top? Good subplots to see. Also, La Liga back as well. Real Madrid and Barcelona had impressive wins with Messi starring for Barcelona with a goal and assist while Hazard and Benzema starred for Real Madrid in their 3-1 win. But now to the meat of the matter. Yes, the Premier League starts today. These games should be crackers. Aston Villa are still in the relegation mire. They're two points away from safety, so a win tomorrow will take them out of the relegation zone. While Sheffield United are chasing Europe, they can't even make the Champions League. They're two points behind Man United in fifth, and what, five points behind Chelsea in fourth. So who knows where they could take them. I mean, when you look at the two teams, what they're fighting for, it should be absolute warfare tomorrow. Second game would see Arsenal take on uh, Man City. So subplots for this one, Arsenal are still chasing Europe. They're in ninth, eight points off um, Chelsea and five off Man United. Those aren't insurmountable leads. It just depends on how consistent Arsenal can be and get wins on the board. However, Man City are also looking to play themselves in the form going into the FA Cup. They've already won the League Cup. But they need to play themselves into form given that the Champions League, which they want to win, starts back in August. And it's going to be a different format where you have to be on your P's and Q's. You don't get a second chance. It seems like it's only going to be one leg. Then there's also the fact that Pep Guardiola will be taking on his former student in Mikel Arteta. Nice subplots to see. I can't wait for tomorrow. Today. So, I know you guys been waiting. On Friday night now, the big game at the start of the restart of Premier League is Chelsea is sorry, Spurs taking on Manchester United. So, this game has so many subplots. None more so than just making the Champions League. So, United in fifth may make the Champions League depending on what City's um ban is like. If the CAS rule that they're still going to be banned, which the verdict is deemed in mid-July or so, then that means that Man United just need to come fifth, or whichever club needs to come fifth to make the Champions League. However, Man United are just three points off Chelsea, who are in fourth. So, to me, it's better to get to fourth, or even third, depending on if results go our way, than try to wait and depend on City. Tottenham, on the other hand, are four points behind United and seven points behind Chelsea. So this is shaping up to be a monumentous battle for that top four position. I mean, if Tottenham win, they'll make up ground and gain momentum, right? If Man United win, they'll pretty much put Tottenham to bed as a top four rival for this season. So I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm super excited for the season to begin and that match especially on Friday. I mean, there are a number of subplots when you look about it. Jose Mourinho, um, Pogba, Martial, Rashford, and Mourinho has started his mind games already where he has been, you know, leaking stuff to the media that Solskjaer may be out of his depth. I mean, I can't wait. 
and now I'll just segue into the next thing I want to talk about and those are fit again players for both clubs so Spurs will be playing at their home versus Man United, Chester United that's the first thing now for Man United the break came at a let's call it a bad time we were in form um, 29 goals scored 2 goals conceded 8 clean sheets and pretty much on a roll in our competition however Tottenham were pretty much struggling at that point and if we had played everybody was of the opinion that would have smashed them now this coronavirus break has actually given both teams the chance to actually heal up meaning all the players that were missing due to injury on Man United side Rashford and Pogba are back for Spurs Kane, Bergwijn, Son, um, Sissoko etc are all back so given that it um has been a long layoff i'm not sure the intensity that it will be but you have better players on show so it should be a good match so that's that with that as i said um this won't be that much of a long preview for that match i'll be doing a more in-depth preview for thursday so you guys can tune into that and with that what i'm going to look at now are the transfer rumors that have been popping up all over the place i mean when you're man united you're linked with about a million players every summer i don't know if you guys remember that nicholas Gaetan rumor and the wesley snyder rumor those never went away and man united never bought any of those players so with that being said let's go into the transfer news all right so the one that has been running all summer Jaden sancho it has been suggested in the newspaper that he has actually told Dortmund Chiefs that he wants to go back to the Premier League after three years there with Man United seemingly ahead of the queue. Yet there are contra contradicting reports also saying Man United are not going to pay the 100 million that Dortmund are asking for and that he has no problem going back to City, yada yada yada. Now, we know that Man United sells newspapers, so you know a lot of those stories are clickbait. It seems that Man United are the front runners, so that is what we're going with. For the transfer to happen this season, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, given that it seems like it has been going on for a while, negotiations have started, etc. The next name on the list has been Kai Havertz. Now, this guy is a baller, another generational talent, so similar to Sancho. However, I don't see us getting both those players in one summer. Each of them would cost like 100 million. Even if you structure the deals, that's still 200 million right off the bat, where we have other positions that need to be strengthened. So for that Kai Havertz one, exceptional talent, but I'd give that one like a three out of 10. I don't see that happening. Um, Jack Grealish also has been pretty much um, linked with United for the summer saying that he'll go for 75 million I don't see United paying 75 million for for Grealish I mean he's a pretty good player don't get me wrong but the way how we have been doing things I just don't see that be especially if Villa get relegated so that one is a wait and see and given that we're also linked with Danny van der Beek since um, they're saying that Real Madrid have dropped out the opinion is that where will all these players play granted you need them so you need better players at each position and with van der Beek, they're saying we'll get rid of andreas or whoever so we'll make space etc so van der Beek is going for around 50 million pounds united want to play less given the coronavirus so we'll wait and see on those two transfers but um for jack Grealish, i give that a 6.5 out of 10 and for van der Beek, a 6.5 out of 10 as well because it may happen but you know we just have to wait and see and see where they go and last on the ends um jude bellingham it has been widely reported that he has chosen dortmund um given that they have a track record of giving the young players chance i'm not sure why you don't think man united does because this season alone shows that but i digress um it stated that he is choosing dortmund given that they he's seen how Jaden sancho has developed so i mean i'll give this one maybe a four out of ten because even though i'm not so sure given that the reports are there we have to wait and see given that they said that united had led a charm offensive with solskjaer sir alex ferguson etc 
I mean, there are a number of players that United have been linked with. Just um, yesterday, we've been linked with Leon Bailey, the Jamaican attacker. Chippy, big up yourself. And um, also current in Tolisso, um, Bernadeschi. There's so many names. But I won't go into those right now. That's a separate video. So let's quickly go to the outs. As I said, it's rumored that we'll get rid of Andreas Pereira to facilitate Danny van der Beek. Roma want back Chris Martin on loan for I think a 4 million um, euro loan fee with the option of buying at the end of the year for about 15. So you know that would be like 19 million euros. A bit small or low if you ask me but let's wait and see. For those two I give them the Andreas a 5 out of 10 and the small one a 8 out of 10. I do see that one happening. I haven't seen any news on say Phil Jones recently but I can only think that that is a player that Man United would look to get rid of with Tuan Zibe, Bai, Mengi who has been promoted as well. So I'm going to give Phil Jones leaving a high 8 out of 10 because I do see that one happening. Lingard as well has gotten that new agent a while back as in Mina Real that we all know how he operates. So I'm giving Lingard leaving as well a 7 out of 10. So those are the outs. Remember, if you're new to the channel, please drop a like, share, comment. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'll be dropping videos like this, you know, from time to time. So thanks for watching again. Peace.